What's going on, everyone? The Aried Lord is here. Welcome back to, oh, a little different kind of vlog. We will not be talking about The Walking Dead today. I have decided to take a break. Also, it's been about a week um, since I've uploaded anything. And again, I want to at least upload a video per week to check in with you guys and uh, just stay active around the community and the channel. Um, there's just, in terms of Walking Dead news, it's been completely radio silent. I don't have too much to go off of other than some speculation vlogs, which we can, of course, do at a later date. Um, but for right now, I wanted to turn my attention towards a series that I just finished a couple of days ago, and I actually, I mean, I've loved this series since it started in 2015, and then I binge-watched the, um, the original series that it's a prequel of, uh, Breaking Bad, back in, um, I think it was the summer of 2014, I binge-watched every season of Breaking Bad. I had not seen it at that point. Um, and I, I absolutely loved it, and I heard that they were making a spinoff, and then I followed uh, Better Call Saul uh, from the first season. So I've been watch I've been following seasons one, two, three, four, and five uh, as they have been uh, sub subsequently released. And I wanted to do a review because back in the day, I actually did a review of Better Call Saul. I did a re I did a review of the individual episodes. Um, Back in 2015, I would do like individual review episodes for season one, and then in season two, I just did an overall kind of wrap-up vlog, uh, just kind of wrapping up the entire uh, season. And uh, and since then, I haven't really had the chance to uh, make any Better Call Saul content, and uh, I feel like this is my opportunity to reconnect with you guys. It's been a couple of seasons. I didn't do any type of review content for actually that's a lie I did a reaction video I remember this me and my brother oh my god we did a reaction video to the season three finale of Better Call Saul <laughs> geez I remember that yeah and um because it was kind of a big deal and um if you guys know remember spoilers that that episode is Chuck's death um but it was just in a very somber way. There wasn't any big explosive action scene. It was just him very somberly kicking a lantern until it fell over and his house burned down. Um, so anyway, to get to the point, season five review. Um, this was a really good season. And it had like it went in certain directions that I was not expecting. Um, to To just go straight into it, I was pretty certain that Kim Wexler, who is pretty is Jimmy's love interest. She's also a lawyer. And her biggest claim to fame was the Mesa Verde uh, client that she had. And she was working at a company, Schweikert and Coakley, which is just another major uh, law agency. And <clears throat> for the first half of the season, she's very much same old Kim working the big cases, you know, her big Mesa Verde is, uh, is a big major client. And there's this whole arc, uh, in the mid point of the season where, uh, Mesa Verde is trying to establish a new bank and it needs the lands of a homeowner who has been there for many, many years. And, they basically need this guy to turn over his property peacefully, even though lawfully they have the rights to take down his property. So Kim tries to get this guy to go through logic. Then she returns and tries to use emotion. And then she kind of brings Jimmy into it where she has this whole plan where they're going to, uh, I think the guy's name is Acker. So they're going to try to make Acker, Jimmy takes Acker as his client and then they make it, Jimmy against Kim Wexler and Jimmy kind of strikes a deal for Acker based on the whole exchange with Kim. And it, it, it certainly doesn't go the way she thought that one of the funniest scenes of the season is when Jimmy is in, uh, is in the Schweikert and Coakley offices and Kevin, who's the head of the Mesa Verde, uh, establishment, <laughs> Jimmy basically makes this lucrative offer that wasn't in the deal to Kevin, and then he has this kind of blackmail video where, you know, it, it's this whole film reel, it's it's hilarious, where it's like, were you harmed by Mesa Verde? And it's Jimmy on a green screen intercutting, 
And it has Kevin's father from way back when Mesa Verde was founded uh, saying, it's funny, he's like, yup, and he just keeps saying it over and over as all of these different people circulate about things that Mesa Verde supposedly did that harmed them. And it's kind of like a lawsuit blackmail video. And it the whole thing blindsides Kim. And when I saw the episode, this it's called Wexler vs. McGill. It's the sixth episode of the season. I was pretty certain that this was going to be the point where Kim splits up with Jimmy because Jimmy like played Kim like because Jimmy does has done this before and Kim is aware of it and they've done schemes together if you guys remember in season two they scammed that guy where they made him pay for all the expensive alcohol that they drank because they said that they were two rich people um they've pulled off scams together and this is kind of like a playful side that Kim has tapped into via Jimmy's uh nature this is the nature that Chuck was trying to suppress that he thought was ruining people and that he thought would, you know, it, what did he say? A chimp with a machine gun back in season one. So we've si we've seen this side of Kim starting to unleash. And I think she was very angry that Jimmy used her. But instead of leaving Jimmy, she actually proposes that they get married so that they always have to be honest with each other. And from a league, they have certain privileges from a legal standpoint. And it's just a direction I didn't think that Kim would go along for the ride. Like, when this season started, I thought that Jimmy was going to do something to drive Kim away. I did not think that Kim would go down the dark path. And it be, like at the point where she is in the finale, I mean, she is actively, if you guys saw the finale for season five, she is actively trying to think of a plan to take down Howard from HHM. And throughout the season, Howard doesn't have too many scenes this season, but every scene that he has, it's kind of like almost like a running gag because he offers Jimmy a job at HHM. And then instead of telling Howard yes or no, he decides to pull a couple of antics, including throwing bowling balls at his car, um, sending prostitutes when he's at a fancy dinner and <laughs> just all these little, uh, you know, tricky things. And it's just, it's, it's hilarious. Howard eventually confronts him. And then Howard tells Kim at the end of the season and Kim just straight out laughs in his face. And Howard thinks he's trying to be the good guy to save Kim. And in some ways, obviously he's, he's much like Chuck where he sees what Jimmy is and he's trying to save Kim from that, from becoming what Jimmy is. But Kim is swimming in the dark pool, I'd say. She's swimming in the deep end with Jimmy, and it reminds me of, kind of reminds me of Skylar from uh, Breaking Bad when she was being, in, when she got invested in Walt's drug empire. She was pretty much Mrs. Heisenberg, uh, laundering his money, running the car wash, and I feel like Kim is becoming Mrs. Goodman. <laughs> and it's funny because in a scene where she visits Lalo in prison, she, uh, Lalo refers to her as Mrs. Goodman, and I'm like, yeah, like, she kind of is becoming Mrs. Goodman, and now, seeing that scene with Lalo, I'm like, yeah, it actually makes sense symbolically why they decided for Lalo to, I mean, he would, he knew Jimmy as Saul Goodman, so it makes sense for him to call, uh, his wife Mrs. Goodman, but, um, so that's a big thing this season that surprised me, and now there's this whole plan, the cliffhanger is that Kim wants to devise this plan to basically cost Howard millions of dollars, possibly make him lose his law firm. And it's it's like an idea she keeps surfacing. And Jimmy's like, like, this isn't you. You wouldn't do this. Like, a Jimmy is being the voice of reason. Like, wouldn't you think Kim would try, would try to reel Jimmy back in and be like, Jimmy, you're a better lawyer than this. You shouldn't be doing these types of things. No, it's actually Kim who's doing these very devious things or even talking about the possibility. And Jimmy's like, what the hell? Like, I didn't think this would be the scenario. And it's just, I like the ability for Peter Gould, Vince Gilligan, the rest of the writing staff to really just pull you in opposite directions. Like you think Kim, you know, Kim's not in Breaking Bad. So you're like, all right, maybe she splits up with Jimmy. She leaves him. Uh, but then all of a sudden she gets pulled in the opposite direction. I'm just like, holy shit. Like, you know, she's becoming Mrs. Goodman and she just, she wants to embrace her dark side. And we see a flashback with her where her mom is this drunk alcoholic and maybe she had a very 
angry, suppressed childhood. So she's able to embrace her fun side now that she's with Jimmy. Um, I can totally understand that. Um, but it's just, it's a very interesting direction for Kim's character. And some, a lot of people have said that she's one of the best characters on the show. And I just, I've enjoyed her arc this season. And I'm very surprised in the direction that they went. Um, obviously, so this is the first season. Last season, we had the revelation of Saul changing his name from Jimmy to Saul Goodman. Uh, he does a lot of work as Saul Goodman, but then Nacho Varga pulls Jimmy into the cartel world. So now this season was really the first time that we saw Jimmy. Like, there were some scenes where Jimmy, you know, had the scene with Tuco in season one. He had some scenes with Nacho. But this is really Jimmy getting pulled into, you know, Amigo de Cartel <laughs> is what is his famous line, you know. That he, and he says that when he gets held at gunpoint when he's delivering the money for Lalo. But um, he gets thrust into the cartel underworld. And, uh, I mean, Lalo, that's another thing. Lalo, what a freaking villain Lalo is. I mean, he's just, it's funny, I read in an interview because Lalo is a Salamanca. And if you guys remember the other Salamancas, there's the... The twins, those crazy psychotic twins, and then there's also um, uh, Tuco, and I'd say Tuco and the and the cousins are crazy. They're all very psychotic, but Lalo is he's got like a sense of humor to him, and I I find that I find that amusing. Where he's got like 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 there's this one scene where he keeps saying the name Werner Ziegler. He keeps he's like Ziegler Ziegler. He just keeps saying the name. <laughs> He just keeps saying the name over and over again. It's hilarious. And he's okay, he's he's talking about the German who is building Gus's laboratory and he's trying to he's trying to get in on Gus's business. And that's one of the reasons that he's involved with the scenario with Mike and uh Gus. Gus is frustrated that Lalo is getting so close and trying to interfere with his operations. So Nacho, as you know, is doing work ever since last season, he's kind of, uh, he's stuck because he's working for Gus as a, you know, secret agent, a spy, and he's working against Lalo, and, you know, Nacho just wants out, he just wants to be out of the drug world, it's funny, Jimmy wants to get in to the cartel world for the money, whereas Nacho wants to get out because he knows what a crazy environment it is, and he's also afraid about the safety of his father. So, I mean, and that's another arc. You follow Nacho's arc of just trying to get out. He appeals to Mike's sense of, uh, you know, sensibility. But Mike is, Mike's going through his own stuff. I mean, for the first half of the season, he's very guilty about having to kill Werner Ziegler last season. But then Gus convinces him through Gus' ways to jump back on the on the Gus bandwagon. And then Mike goes into full henchman mode. But... I feel bad for Nacho. I feel bad that he's just, he can't break free. The only honesty he was really able to convey is when he meets Eladio, the head Don of the cartel. He has that scene with Don Eladio where he's like, look, like, I just want to call the shots, be my own man. Like, I'm tired of being a bitch. Um, and it was just interesting for, you know, the leader of the cartel. I mean, if you're going to be, <laughs> of all people to be brutally honest with, the fucking leader of the cartel. I think that's kind of, uh, it's 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 very bold, but it's it just I think it just also shows how much he wants to get out of Dodge, you know, just to escape the scenario he's in, and he's tied down to Gus, he's tied down to Lalo, and Lalo still thinks that, um, well, not anymore. After the final season or the final episode when the assassins try to kill Lalo, he was assuming that Nacho was his buddy because Nacho was playing both sides very well until that last episode when the assassins failed to kill Lalo and they knew they leaked that there was a man in the inside and Lalo looks over at the drinks that he was having with Nacho and instantly recognizes that Nacho was uh, aiding those assassins. So Nacho and every single person who put that hit on, on Lalo, they are very much in trouble. I mean, when season six starts, it's going to be like a freaking firework explosion because Lalo is going to be looking for revenge. And, uh, you know, you almost feel bad for him. And that final scene, I found it interesting that I was almost following him like a main character, like a protagonist that I wanted to win because that's his home. 
some of his family that were innocents that Nacho said not to kill. They were killed in the crossfire. Um, and you feel bad because, you know, obviously Lalo is a doing illegal crimes and has also killed innocent people. He's not a saint by any metric. But in that scene, he's just... An, in that scenario, he's an innocent person who's being attacked in, an, in a home invasion scenario. And he's defending himself, defending his home. His family is hurt. And so just like anyone, you're just like, wow, like this, this, they, they turned a villain into a victim. And now the victim is going back to villain. And now he's going to wreak havoc. And it's like, what does that mean for everybody? Because Jimmy was freaking out after that big confrontation with Lala. When Lala went right to Jimmy's house, he was freaking out what was going to happen. Um, and Mike said that Lala was going to die. So now Jimmy thinks that Lala's dead, but Lala is still going to come after them. Um, I'm going to assume that if Lalo dies next season, Jimmy McGill doesn't know about it. Because if you guys remember the scene in Breaking Bad, when Walt and Jesse tie up Saul and bring him out into the desert, uh, Saul does his whole Amigo de Cartel, and then he says, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, and were you guys, weren't you guys sent by Lalo? Like, he mentions Lalo, and... I'm going to assume that Jimmy still thinks that Lalo is alive because I'm going to assume something with Mike and Nacho, something goes down where Nacho and, and uh, Lalo die or one of them dies and gets away. Um, but I don't think based on that quote from Breaking Bad, I don't think Jimmy is going to be aware if Lalo gets killed. So that makes me wonder if the storyline for next season is going to be about Two, twofold. You're going to have Lalo going after Nacho and going after Gus and Mike trying to basically take down Lalo and make sure things don't explode. Um, and then you're also going to have Jimmy and Kim seemingly trying to take down Howard um, because I wasn't sure how Howard's character was going to continue this season or into next season, but obviously him being concerned about Kim's well-being, offering Jimmy the job, um, and now if they're directly going to attack him, that would very much, you know, deal with his character. You know, will Howard lose his business? Will Kim be legally affected because she's doing this? Like, there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be repercussions of Lalo escaping and going after those who tried to harm him, repercussions of Kim's plan to take down Howard, even though Howard, you know, really didn't do much to her. Well, I mean... Actually, she kind of does have a beef with Howard. Howard fired her from HHM or like sent her into the basement and kind of like demoted her because of her relation to Jimmy and kind of treated her like shit. Um, so I suppose she has some reason to go after him. But again, interesting decision to have Kim embrace. I don't know. I like it. I like dark Kim, but I'm just, th I'm just saying like, it's interesting because I thought Jimmy's decisions would get Kim hurt rather than Kim embracing her dark side, her Mrs. Goodman side, and then hurting herself by going down this dark path. Because we know that Jimmy stays the course into the events of Breaking Bad, and then we have the the Gene Takovic storyline that will be concluded somehow. I have no idea, because we've only had brief scenes, and I know that Jimmy was about to call the Disappearer to, to vanish again because somebody figured out who he was in Omaha, but then he's like, no, I'll solve it on my own. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Jimmy McGill because he has a plan in the future, but we just don't know what it is. Um, and I'm thinking season six will, op will open up with the black and white flash forward Gene scene. But then I think the f maybe the final episode of Better Call Saul, because I don't know if you guys know, but season six was announced as the final season. So... They need to wrap all of this up and make it lead into Breaking Bad in some way, shape, or form. So, um, I'm going to assume that we're going to have, like, a full Gene episode. Like, I think maybe the finale or something will... Or maybe they'll intersplice it. You know, maybe there'll be some scenes in the future and it'll be some back in the past wrapping up things with Jimmy's storyline. I mean, because they... I don't think it's going to be enough to have one scene at the beginning of season six that discusses 
what Gene does. Or so Gene, I keep saying Gene, but Saul, Jimmy, whatever freaking alias he has. Um, you're going to need some type of larger scene because also you can't end with that because let's say we know what Jimmy's fate is. Like he, maybe he gets arrested uh, again or he you know gives himself up or he goes to Alaska, whatever the hell it is. You would know the ultimate fate of Saul Goodman. And then you're watching everything that happens in the past and you're like, well, why do I need to watch what happened in the past? Because I already know what his fate is. So I'm thinking that they're going to reserve the black and white future Saul storyline. And that'll be probably one of the last scenes of season six. And that will conclude the the, the series. That'll conclude it. And uh, it'll have been an amazing run with some... I mean, think of the memorable characters. I mean, Howard and Chuck and Lalo and Nacho. And they're from different areas. You know, Chuck and um, Howard represent the law. And Nacho and Lalo are the cartel. So, and there's just so many colorful, flavorful characters. And then also bringing back some uh, classics like Huel and Tuco. And so it's it's been a great ride. And it's just... There's great cinematography, uh, great music. I always love the... There's always, like, songs that I never knew existed that they always choose to uh, be played. And um, it's fun. It's fun. It's engaging. And I really, really enjoy it. And I've enjoyed this season a lot. And so, um, uh, man, it's hard to really give this season a rating because I haven't really been doing consistent reviews. And I just tried to sum up... 10 episodes in one freaking vlog, which I know is very ambitious. Um, it makes me feel bad I wasn't doing individual reviews, but I felt that they kind of conflicted with the preview vlogs and stuff I was doing for The Walking Dead. But um, now that Walking Dead is on an indefinite hiatus for who knows how freaking long, I figured that I would give you guys this video to munch on because I very much enjoyed Better Call Saul, and I wanted to give you guys a summation obviously everything i say can't sum up everything there's many more things that happen i didn't mention and i would highly suggest i mean if you guys are stuck inside and need something to watch binge watch all five seasons of better call saul because as a walking dead fan i highly recommend it it's great tv drama and it'll i guess keep you occupied uh for a little bit so all right thank you guys very much um gonna give a 9.75 i mean almost near perfection uh for this season um, you know, I think Howard's character was used for, for a main cast character. He wasn't utilized as much. I would have liked, cause he almost felt like just like a side character. I was hoping for maybe one or two more scenes with Howard. I mean, he served his purpose. He really just served a purpose to build up other characters. This season was much more about Jimmy and Kim. I mean, Kim got a huge spotlight in this season, much more than she did in previous seasons. And, um, this season was as much about her dark turn as it was about Jimmy embracing some darker stuff inside of him. Um, and there was just huge character changes, you know, going through. And, um, yeah, that is all I have to say. So, anyway, I will see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching. And, as always, you can comment, rate, subscribe, and stay tuned. Walking Dead content will resume shortly i don't know when but i'll have some type of vlog to hold you over until we get the season 10 finale whenever the hell that is all right thanks guys see you later